Turner and here is what we're going to be discussing. First up, as the NHS England gives its staff two weeks paid leave for miscarriages, we're asking if the government should force all company bosses to do the same. Then is it time to bring back dog licences? There's been a big rise in dog attacks, so would um, making owners have a licence make any difference at all? And should couples who ha have shared bank accounts, even if both parties are working, there can be a big difference in salaries, so should they just put everything in one joint bank account or should they keep their finances separate? And finally, is it wrong to read your child's diary? They're supposed to be personal and kids might want to keep them a secret. So if you come across a diary, should you have a little look or leave well alone? Whatever your thoughts on any of our talking points today, the number is 0207 862 That's 0207 862 Calls from landlines may cost up to 16 pence per minute plus any call setup fees and calls from mobiles may cost considerably more. You can though send us a message. You head to Facebook, you head to X, search for Jeremy Vine on 5, we'll pop up and then you can use the hashtag Storm Huntley. All right, let's get straight into our first topic then. And should the government force bosses to give miscarriage leave? 0207 862 is the number to give us a ring. Women suffering a miscarriage in the first 24 weeks of their pregnancy may now claim up to 10 days of paid leave if they work for NHS England. A partner can also claim five days. That's the new guidance for the NHS Trust. It's been hailed as groundbreaking and it's intended to give people time to grieve as well as physically recover. But for many other women, losing a baby in that time means actually getting up, going back to work or asking to use other sorts of leave options like sick leave or annual leave. So to, should actually all bosses be made to offer miscarriage leave? Laurie, I'll start with you on this one. Do you think this is a sensible approach by the NHS? No, I'm afraid. Um, I mean, it's a, such a difficult subject because I've never had a miscarriage that I've known about anyway. So I can't speak from that, you know, knowledge of, of the kind of terrible loss of that. Um, but I just think that we're getting to a situation where you've got we're having like two parallel sorts of work. You've got the people who work for public sector or work for big companies who are uh, you know, able to work four days a week and they can have this leave and that leave and the other leave and this allowance. And, and then everybody else who's freelance and on zero hours con um, contracts who gets nothing. And so I suppose I come from the group of the freelancers and we think, hang on a second, perhaps people should think about um, they've all, all, all got it quite well when you work for those big companies. And I think probably it's a bit much to ask. They should, you should be entitled to compassionate leave and that's absolutely fine. But I don't think you should be, have a legal responsibility as, as an employer to, to offer this. I mean, there's a cost of living crisis and businesses are feeling it as well. And this is just potentially an added cost. But then, you know, your staff are happier people and you have a happier workforce if they think that you care. It's a difficult yeah. one. Part of the reason the NHS Trust has done this is retention of staff because, mm. and they've got a huge problem with staff going. So it's one of those things, I think, where any organisation, public or private sector, will look at its problems with retaining staff and go, well, we need to do this, that, the other to keep people on board. And there are private sector companies that offer egg freezing, for example, to some women in the city mm. because that's something that, that helps with their staff. But I think the main thing, I, a problem I think I've, I've got with this is I think I haven't had a miscarriage either, and I'm also freelance, so I tend to think anyone who's got maternity leave is really lucky and should probably just bite it. But um, I do think that lots of my friends who've had miscarriages, they didn't go and tell the office at the time. And I think for many people, and many women, of course, they, they feel that if their boss knows they're trying for a baby, they're going to be sidelined, they're going to be judged differently, and they may not want to tell the whole office, especially if there's a, a problem perhaps they're having regular miscarriages, they're not going to want to discuss it with everybody all the time. And therefore, having miscarriage leave is something you do have to discuss with people that you might not want to discuss it with, if not the whole office, but at least your boss. And I think in those circumstances, there'll be some women who will say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to take my normal week's sick leave that I can get anyway mm -hmm. and just say I'm sick or have a doctor's note for a bit longer. And I th don't think every woman who's had a miscarriage is going to want to announce it. Interesting. OK, let's bring in Vicky Robinson, the Deputy Director of Miscarriage Association. Vicky, you've campaigned for rights like this. I I explain why it's necessary. Uh, we do, just to pick up on what Susie said there, actually, about it being a voluntary thing. Of course, it's voluntary. Um, but, you know, we do want it to be available to all women if they want to take it. Um, pregnancy loss happens to one in four pregnancies. It can be a really distressing experience for people, both emotionally and physically. It can be, can be really traumatic. It often involves very physical experiences or surgery. 
having um, the right to be able to take leave and supported leave from work can make that, you know, it's not going to make the experience better for people in that respect, but having that acknowledgement that they're going through a significant and possibly traumatic event, being supported to be able to take time off to start that recovery and the grieving process if they if they see it as a bereavement is, is so, so important. So we're really pleased to see this. And to go back to your original question, yes, we do think it's something that all employers should offer. But when you're talking about one in four pregnancies end in miscarriage, that is a huge number. So this is potentially a huge amount of leave that businesses that could be struggling at the moment that are, are going to have to cover. And we're talking about miscarriages that may have happened in week five, week six, pretty early on. Some of these miscarriages happen and, and women don't even know that that's what, what, what's happened. So does that really need two weeks off? Well, we don't want to put, you know, grief into a league table. People will feel differently about their loss. It's a very individual experience. Some people will want leave. Some people won't want to take leave. They might want to go back to work because they find it a supportive environment. And yes, there will be. There is a cost to business. There always is. But I would equally say, you know, can businesses afford not to do this? There's a piece of research out that shows that 24% of people who have been through a loss and who didn't feel supported ended up leaving that employer. Um, people who are supported to take time off and feel supported to return to work end up taking less time off overall. They're able to work at their usual levels. They're more loyal to the company. You know, there's a cost, but there, you know, there is also a benefit to doing that as well. So I would argue that, you know, there is this potential that companies can't afford not to do this. Vicky, stay with us. I just want to take some calls. Valerie from London, what's your thoughts on miscarriage leave? Do you think this sounds like a good idea? No, no, I don't. I mean, I feel really sorry for women that have a miscarriage. Mm. But, you know, they want time off for that and for the menopause and for things. And they wonder why they don't get the same wage packet as a man. Well, they don't get the same wage packet as a man for lots of different reasons. And I don't think it's because of an, now a new introduction of miscarriage leave. But, but I hear your point. You think that potentially this will be another reason for an employer not to employ a woman Absol over a man? Absolutely, I do. I'm going to put it, your. I mean, I'm going to put your point to Vicky because I think a lot of people will be feeling that way at home. Vicky, what about that criticism that actually you're only giving employers more reason not to employ women of of childbearing years? I think it's a it's a reasonable point, but I think we need cultural change. You know, Susie alluded to this earlier as well about. People often don't feel able to disclose their pregnancy at work. Well, we shouldn't have a situation where people feel that they have to hide a pregnancy or a loss at work. People shouldn't be discriminated against because they are of childbearing age or, or wish to start a family. You know, we need to start um, treating women with the respect that they deserve in the workplace and, mm -hmm. and the equity that they should have with men already. It's a whole, you know, it's not just about um, miscarriage leave. It's about that cultural change that recognises a woman's worth in the workplace. Valerie, do you think that might be missing? Wait a minute. What about the menopause? I mean, every woman gets that, but they want the window shut. They want to have time off. I mean, they want all these concessions, which are, you know, it's not fair on the bosses, I don't think. Valerie, I mean, it's a, it's a fair point you make, and definitely putting that in with women's health is absolutely valid, but it is a slightly different debate to be had. I suppose when it comes to miscarriage, you're dealing with a, a grief, a loss potentially. If you've really struggled to get pregnant, maybe you've had, went through IVF, which I believe is a very traumatic experience, and then you've lost that baby, even if it is in week five, perhaps you do need that time and you need your boss to know that it's actually compassionate leave, not just sick leave. There's an emotional and mental element to it, you know, in order for your, uh, your process back into work to be smoother. Is that not fair? I, yes, I agree. I mean, I think it must be devastating, but I can't blame a boss for not employing somebody that could have a baby because this can happen and it affects his business and the other people in the office and whatever. So would you be against uh, maternity leave then, Valerie? I mean, we do get it. There's statutory maternity well, leave. Then, but do you think yes. that's wrong too? No, I think it's right. But I don't think it's fair on the bosses. Okay. I mean, I, that's another reason for not employing women of, of childbearing age. It's a, I mean, it's a really interesting point, Valerie. Thank you very much for your I, call. I, I was uh, talking to a, um, 
uh, somebody who runs a dog grooming business, you know, I, do, I groom yeah. a dog, I'm not doing this. And what was really interesting is I found myself saying to her, she was saying, oh, my daughter's going off on maternity leave. And what came out of my mouth, and I was quite surprised, was, well, you won't have any problem with that with me because I'm well beyond kids now. And I thought, that's really interesting that I'm now thinking, well, that makes me more employable because I'm not going to have a baby. Now, you know, 20 years ago, I was that woman who work was taken away once I had a baby and stuff. So I do think that I think I, I, I think most of us sit in the middle on this. We do think there needs to be societal change where mm. women can talk about this. But I also think we do need to think about uh, NHS, you know, is, is very behind in terms of, you know, how long you have to wait for an appointment. Can we really afford for people to be away even more than they are? And small businesses, can they afford this? This is still only guidance, though. Yes. It's, it's only something that yep. people and it's on trust as well. not to yes. do. And so it's still not a legal right. I think part of the trouble is that if you have normal sick leave um, for your miscarriage, you don't yeah. tell someone, and you, then you want miscarriage leave, it would actually be protected mm -hmm. under employment legislation if... Um, if it was available to you, and that would make a difference to your future employment and, and so on and so forth. But I just, I'm really annoyed to some extent, not at Valerie, but at the kind of things that, that must have informed what she was thinking, mm -hmm. that what women want or what women need because of our health needs, whether it's menopause or childbirth or something or miscarriage or something else, is making everything complicated for the poor men, right? The men are very lucky. They don't have any of that stuff. Well, making and, things and complicated well. for bosses and bosses could are, be men and women, yeah, but, but they're predominantly men. men. But it's, it's, mm -hmm. men are very lucky. They don't have lots of that stuff. This miscarriage thing does affect mm -hmm. partners too, and they could also have some time off. But I don't think that what we need to function well and healthily in society should be seen as a complication and like trying to bring down mm. business and other problems. It should be that we are just part of society and in the same way you have to cater for men's needs, cater for women that are just have different needs. You know, but it we're isn't, not the complication. It is a complication if you've now got to cover that person's job for two weeks. That's a practical complication that a business faces. Well, men it? have their own complications, you know, because they think with what's in their trousers. We don't tend to do that. Okay, that doesn't necessarily need time off, though. Uh, Kelly, for, of course, there's a lot of problems in the offices. Yes, but you would hope. Uh, Kelly from Manchester, what's your thoughts on miscarriage leave? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I think there should be maybe not companies forced into giving um, two weeks, but I think that there should be an, an element of, of compassionate leave allowed. Um, I for a miscarriage um mine was um, a cesarean ectopic pregnancy it was quite traumatic at nine weeks um i was just in the process of starting a new job i had to continue on even though the whole um miscarriage was the process was still ongoing so i was going into into my new job um as a teacher going through the induction process and so on. And the day after, I was having to go into hospital to have the remains of the baby removed. Um, so it's quite a traumatic experience. And I think if you're lucky enough to be employed and your employer actually understands that process and can, and can say, well, yeah, even if, you know, you take as much time as you need, we will put a time limit on it. Um, but I think it's very important because you know, whether or not you're working, you need time to process that whole situation. You know, you've actually lost a baby. And I think it's so underestimated, if you like, sometimes, you know, you can just pass it in conversation. Oh, yeah, I, I've miscarried and I've miscarried. And then you get, oh, God, well, that's a shame. But we move on quite quickly. But even now, nearly two years after, I'm still struggling to process that there was actually a baby there, and now there was, and and we could have had a child, mm. and now we haven't. So yeah. it would have been our fourth child. So obviously, I've got three, and I keep, I do often think, it's a very, very funny thing to have to cope with, anyway. So, um, it when they introduced the certificate that just a couple of weeks ago. Um, that you actually can, can get from the Department of Health, which actually justifies that, yes, there was a baby, and here it is on paper. That makes it hard, uh, easier, beg your pardon, to process the actual loss. You've actually got evidence in front of you, because otherwise there wasn't. So, yes, I do feel that employers 
Regardless I'm, really, of I'm, I'm really glad that the way things are going are, will help women in the future perhaps go through uh, the, the horrible experience that you had. I mean, an ectopic pregnancy and having to go through that kind of surgery, physically it's very um, demanding on your body, but mentally, as you've explained, must be incredibly traumatic. Not all miscarriages are, are the same. And I wonder though whether in putting this in place, what we're doing is putting businesses under pressure unnecessarily to give two weeks off to women that may not necessarily need it, when actually maybe what you needed was a lot more than two weeks and you could have got that, had they not had to offer it out to everybody? I'll give them the option, just give them that option and they can say, yes, I need it or no, I don't. Because some, some women prefer to just, you know, keep calm and, and carry on and get on with it. You know, that's how people can deal with it and do process it. But for others that maybe need a little bit of time, maybe having that option is better than not. And, and ha well, it's done on a trust basis, and I suppose maybe that makes sense in those circumstances. Kelly, thank you so much for calling and, and sharing your story. If you've been affected by this, please do get in contact with Miscarriage Association, which is the association Vicky is part of. Uh, the helpline number is 0192 4200 and for any other helplines as well that you might need, you can visit channel5.com forward slash helplines. Huge thank you to Vicky Robinson for joining us for that debate. We're going to take more of your calls actually on this one, so don't go away. Should we force businesses to give miscarriage leave? That's what we're asking. And we're also going to be discussing if it's time to bring back dog licences. Dog attacks are on the rise in England and Wales. There have been calls for harsher sentences. But do actually we need dog licences to stop people being attacked? 0207 862 222 is the number. We'll see you after this. A Shropshire woman was used, has used which unusual appliance to cook salmon? Was it A, a dishwasher, B, a washing machine, or C, a tumble dryer? Find out which after the break.
Before the break, we asked Shropshire Woman has used which unusual appliance to cook salmon? And the answer is A, a dishwasher. Plates would smell, though, wouldn't they, afterwards? You'd have to put well, it on again. You'd put it in the tumble you? dryer, it'd be in all your knickers. <laughs> <laughs> think we'll move on. Um, oh, welcome back. Now we're going to take more of your calls on this. Should the government be forcing bosses to give miscarriage leave? 0207 862 22 is the number to give us a ring. The NHS have already said they're going to start doing it. It's guidance. It's going to be done on trust. Uh, so we're asking whether this should be rolled out across uh, the rest of the country. Julia in Devon, you're up first. What's your thoughts? Do you think this is a good idea? Yes, I do. I'm sorry, I'm a bit emotional about this. Um, yeah, I, I'm nearly 70 now, but I've had seven miscarriages. And um, I, from the minute I knew I was pregnant, they were my child. Mm. And people seem to forget it's a death. It's, even now, I cry about them. My husband and I have a special thing um, every spring... We have daffodils in a certain place in the house, which is for all our children. Oh, Julia. People need to remember that it is a death. I, even now, I think my eldest would have been 50. And I think, what would they be doing now? What would they be like? Julia, can I ask, at what, what stage was the miscarriage? Oh, or the miscarriages? Them, some, but early, very early. Some of them were very early. Okay, and some of them a bit later? Yeah, I mean, you've been did, pregnant. Did, yeah. You know, you know you're pregnant, that's your child. Yeah, but Julia, I mean, I have, I think every woman is different and that's why this discussion yeah. is, is, is difficult because I have also, I would say it was losing a pregnancy rather than a miscarriage um, very early on. I think it was five weeks. And... I'm sorry it to didn't, hear that. Uh, do you know, Julia, thank you, but it didn't affect me in the same way that it clearly has affected you. Now, that's not saying that I'm callous and cold and horrible and it's not saying that you're oh, no. over-emotional. We just feel things and experience things differently and process things differently. So my attitude was get back to work, don't really think about it, move on, it'll happen. And I did. I got a beautiful little boy and that's, that's a wonderful end to that story. And I suppose that's the difficulty where something like miscarriage leave comes into it because every woman is different and I wouldn't have needed that two weeks but you clearly did so yeah. should we not have compassionate leave where you could go to your doctor and say I'm really struggling with this loss physically I'm struggling mentally I'm struggling and I need compassionate leave or sick leave and the doctor could then send a letter these processes are already in place so I suppose the argument may be that this is already happening just in a less formal way. But even the, 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 that leave, is, it's down to the individual, isn't it? Mm. They can offer you the leave, but if you don't want to take it, you can do that. Uh, yes, I know somebody, um, and they did. They went straight back to work. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's more... And you could just tell your boss they don't need to, need to know... Well, with miscarriage leave, your boss would have to know, Julia, and that also springs up another problem is, I don't know, how would you have been comfortable going to your boss and telling them that you'd, ha you'd had a miscarriage? Yes. Yeah. You yeah, would have I been would've... at that point. Yeah. That would have worked for you. Can I ask you a question, Julia? If yeah. you'd had... I'm, I'm sorry for your loss, and I, I'm, I know a little bit about what it must have been like, because some of the, the nuclear veteran widows that I talk to a lot when I'm... I'm talking to the, about the veterans of the, the nuclear test, they've had multiple miscarriages. And I can remember talking to a lady in her 70s who just burst into tears and still weeping for the six babies she'd lost many decades earlier. So I, I understand it a little bit. But do you feel that if you'd had some compassionate leave at the time, I don't know if you were working or not, but if you'd had some time when those miscarriages occurred, that today, now you're nearly 70, you might be a little bit more... Um, I don't know what the right word is, but a little bit more um, able to, to accept or, or process or to have, have had that time so that the grief perhaps wouldn't be quite so raw as it obviously still is in your case? Maybe. I don't, maybe it's, things have changed over the years. I mean, when I had my first miscarriage, I mean, people, oh, well, it, you know, it wasn't a baby. 
no, you could, you know, try again. I mean, I went to my mum in tears and she just pushed me away. Oh. And, um, oh, no. stop it. Oh, no. There were very different attitudes in those days, weren't there? I, I, that's, yeah. I've got someone in my family who had a stillbirth uh, at full term and uh, was, did, wasn't even shown the baby. It was, it was just yeah. told, you know, it's, no, it's monstrous, kind of take it away. And that, oh, no I mean, funeral, like, anything like we'd have now today. Yeah, yeah. I, I know somebody who miscarried and her mother said, um, well, let's not dwell on, um, uh, you know, un unhappy thoughts. And that was the only thing that was said, like, just put that behind you, move on. You know, that so, was, that's so, now. But now hearing this, the NHS mm. might have got this right. Maybe I'm beginning this is to something wonder whether that, that yeah. has to change in order for us to accept that miscarriage is a part of life. Miscarriage is a tough thing for everyone to go through, partners as well, and that we need to allow people that process to grieve. Potentially, the way I dealt with the, the pregnancy loss was unhealthy. I don't know. Well, I think particularly if you've had one loss and there's, there's not a, a maybe a chronic problem that's going to have many losses, that that may be exactly the right thing for you to do. And the, the person in my family who lost the baby just went, the next thing to do is, but I need to go and get pregnant again and that's what will fix it. And did and that was fine. But I think if you've got a problem where you're having repeated losses, then you probably need more time towards the end of those processes as it gets and repeated. And each one would be you know. more and more difficult yeah, and how exactly. long it took you to get pregnant and try. Julia, thank you so much yeah. for calling up and just showing how long these effects can last. Uh, thank yeah. you. Say, Say, um, sorry, um, go on, Julia. Go, um, that I did end up, I've got a beautiful son and a beautiful daughter. I didn't want to ask, but no. that's just made my day. Julia, thank you. Mm. Sarah from Hertfordshire, what's your, what's your story? Do you have a story? Oh, yeah. Um, hiya. I'm a salon owner and um, I've got three children. Um, I had a fourth child. He passed away when he was 16. Um, the government didn't give me any support then because I was self-employed. So I just feel, and I, being a small business owner, I don't think we should have this. Um, for me, I just feel like it's down to the individual um me as a boss, if one of my girls comes to me and said, this is what I'm going through, I'd be like, pack your bears, go home. they mm. sort this out. The lady beforehand, bless her, she's gone through so such a lot. Two weeks isn't going to mend you. You need to be able to talk to someone. Maybe the NHS needs to provide more counselling or support for ladies going through these losses rather than, oh, two weeks off, to think about and mend from what you're going through, that that's no time. You need, I feel you need extra support to deal with how you're dealing with the miscarriage. I hear what you're saying, Sarah. I think it might be very difficult for the NHS to provide that because for their staff because they can't even provide it for us. The waiting list for mental health mm. treatment are incredibly long at the moment and there's been all sorts of stories coming out about that. I, I, they don't seem to have the resources. It's interesting you've suffered such a tragic loss yourself and, and uh, you would be incredibly compassionate with your employees. I think the problem is, Sarah, that not all bosses would be... Not all bosses would understand the impact that a, a, a miscarriage can have. I, I, I really think also I've come across staff members that would take the mickey with something like that, which I, I know that it's a trust issue with having staff, but... I feel that if it was a rule that you have to give it, I feel that some people would take advantage of it, which isn't good. Me, myself, when I suffered my loss, when I lost my son, we had to pay privately to have counselling. And if I hadn't had that counselling, I don't know how I would have got through it because the doctor just gave me pills that I'd probably be addicted to now and said, get on your merry way and turn around to my husband and said, um, can you hide them from her just to make sure I wouldn't, kill myself. Oh, Sarah, that's yeah. horrible, it's but I'm glad that you managed. I mean, I understand you had to pay for it privately. I'm glad you managed to get the therapy th that was needed. There's quite a few things that you you brought up there. Um, and, and part of that is the fact that you're a small business owner, you're self-employed, meaning that you don't get very much government help, something Lowry brought up uh, earlier. Is this may be something that rather than businesses have to pay for, that the government has to pay for? Which is not, there's no free money. That's us. It's taxpayers. That's yeah, all it's of taxpayers us. taxpayers' money, yeah. I think the calls we've had today have, have made me change my mind slightly in the fact that maybe we, two weeks isn't very much. No. And maybe we do need to off, offer it. 
Um, I just still do feel, though, as you know, Sarah was saying, there's, there is becoming a two-tier system of the, some of us who are freelance who get no internity, no nothing, zero hours contract, you know, and then some people in, you know, get uh, every kind of leave and allowance, and you know, and that yeah. doesn't feel fair somehow. I think almost if you did legislate, then there would just be more and more women who have to go freelance without those rights in order uh. to try and keep working, because. If, it just gets to the point where bosses were not going to recruit women. I mean, none Which of Which it ends now. up full cycle, then, yeah. saying you're but very I, much reliant I, I on your partner. I do think, though, that some of the things, like you said, that the mm -hmm. callers have mentioned, yeah, I think you have to be able to say that miscarriages is something that can be protected in law, for example, at industrial tribunals. So you can't, yeah. you can claim that as perhaps part of a constructive dismissal mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. and that you have to have some of this, some of these rights protected. You know, if you could, for example, if someone is taking the mick out of someone who at work who's had miscarriages, which is horrific, by the way, um, you know, that that becomes I part I, I of... I thought that was originally what Sarah was saying. I think actually if she's talking about people taking the mick out of the system, so oh, if right. it was enshrined in law, people would be taking yeah. the mick as in saying they had miscarriages when perhaps they didn't, or saying they had miscarriages and it affected them more than it actually did, Sarah. And as a small business owner, I imagine that would be a, a great concern. I'm so sorry for your loss. Mm. I feel like I'm saying that to everyone, but there's such tragic stories we're hearing. Thank you so much for sharing them and also as a small business owner, sharing your um, opinion on this. Debbie from Derbyshire, what's your thoughts on miscarriage leave? I mean, it is going to be difficult for small businesses. Well, it is, but I wanted to, I'm an NHS doctor and um, a little while, well, I've had two miscarriages whilst working in the NHS and I've been in the NHS since 1998. And my worst experience was working in Obsom Um I lost a baby in the first trimester and um did my my boss did know and i felt like you do because we're so short staffed in the nhs i need to get back to work but my first rotors they immediately put me back on for the following week was gynae assessment unit which is where i'm permanently counseling women who have just miscarried and so i'm sat there having lost my baby still body not fully recovered telling them in, in some ways perhaps in a good way in that I can understand where they're coming from saying you know if, if you're like me I see a pregnancy positive pregnancy test and my child's virtually going off to school you know I don't see it as an embryo it's a baby and that's it um, and um, and they appreciated that but it took so much out of me that I think it impacted on me greatly that I then changed to GP practice during my GP practice, I had a pregnancy, um, and he um, died under 24 weeks, but he took some breaths. And because he took some breaths, I was allowed maternity leave, paternity leave, a live birth certificate, a death birth certificate. We were able to bury him. The amount of support I got from the GP team was phenomenal. So, and I mean, that um, both stories are, are equally horrible and I'm sorry you had to go through that but because you got more support for the second even though some might say that that was a, a more difficult loss to deal with do you actually think that that helped your recovery a bit better yeah absolutely wow. absolutely because it also because I have other children at home and it was trying to explain to them what I'd been through um, and also, you know, why is mommy crying and things and getting them to appreciate yes. mommy's just a bit upset at the moment and things. Debbie, I can understand that must have been so difficult with other children trying to explain it as well. Thank you very much for your call. It just shows the support can have a real impact. Uh, we're going to have to wrap up because I've went way over already, but I just, I really appreciate all your calls on this one. As we mentioned, helplines, if you've been affected by anything you've heard today, please contact Miscarriage Association, their helpline, 01, uh, sorry, 0192. 4200799. You can look it up, all the helplines you might need. Take a visit to channel5.com forward slash helplines.